Enjoy the convenience of seven days a week banking and extended hours with Cube from First Arkansas Bank and Trust. Member FDIC. It's time for From the Short Grass with Trey Shap, a golf podcast for those who love golf, struggle with golf, and just like to enjoy the outdoors and fellowship with friends, all while chasing a ball around trying to put it in a four and a quarter inch diameter hole. From the Short Grass is brought to you by Stevens Incorporated, an independent financial services firm with the freedom to focus on what matters most. Blackman Auctions. For over 80 years, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels. We partner with you to deliver high yield results by managing, developing, and investing in top quality hospitality assets. And now, from the short grass, here is your host, Trey Shap. Welcome to another edition of From the Short Grass. I am your host, Trey Shap. The first leg of the FedEx Cup playoffs is complete. Will Zalatoris wins the FedEx St. Jude Championship after making a seven-foot putt to save bogey on the third playoff hole, which was a wild playoff in and of itself, against Sepp Straka at TPC Southwind over in Memphis, Tennessee. It was the first PGA Tour victory for Will Zalatoris, who now sits number one in the FedEx Cup standings. Here's Will Zalatoris with his thoughts on the win. It's kind of hard to say about time when it's been your second year on tour, but um, about time. Um, Obviously, uh, this week was kind of a grind considering the start that I had. Uh, I love this golf course. I played well here last year. yeah, considering all the close uh, close finishes that I've had this year, um, to finally pull it off, is uh, it means a lot. Speaking of the close finishes, he lost in a playoff at the PGA Championship over at Southern Hills in Tulsa to Justin Thomas, and then he missed a putt on the final hole at the U.S. Open at the Country Club in Brookline that would have got him into a playoff with Matt Fitzpatrick. This time, he won the playoff. It took three holes – and it was a wild playoff, but he won the playoff. Here's Will Zalatoris talking about that final hole, the 11th hole, which was the third playoff hole when he was able to defeat Sepp Straka. I thought there was no chance that ball was covering the water. Um, when it landed and saw it bounce a few times and heard the crowd cheer, um, I knew I got a pretty fortunate break, but... Um, I, I really I couldn't get the, the club on the ball. Um, considering where Sepp was and he had four feet for five, uh, there's no reason for me to try that shot and it could bank right into the grass and go back in the water and all of a sudden I've lost a golf tournament. So honestly, I saw it bounce three times and then I didn't know if it, I knew it didn't stay on the rocks because I couldn't see it, but I didn't know if it stayed in the rough and was an easy up and down or if it was maybe wedged in kind of the collar. And um, I... You know, it just shows you, I mean, you know, at that point, it's basically match play. And so, um, I, yes, very fortunate in the fact that it looks like I had maybe an easy up and down and I did it and maybe forced up to hit one over there towards a flagstick. But, um, you know, hats off to him. I mean, he made a couple of really nice pots that to just to get to the third hole. And um, honestly, that's just part of golf too is i mean that his ball easily could have stayed up as well you know pretty unfortunate to take a pretty hard right kick um we went back to the drop zone and obviously it paid off um you know i i like i said it's one of those i i guess you could say it's a fortunate break um that it stayed up but um obviously i had to earn it um after what happened i knew i wouldn't have played the shot but i at least was going to take a peek at it and Joel told me about three times, hey, you know, Sepp's got four feet for, for five. Keep, you know, go back, go back. And so um, I, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't giving up an easy chance where I could just kind of, you know, maybe pop one up on the green and get an easy two putt. And it was just not doable. Um, I, I couldn't get the club below basically half the equator of the ball. With the lower lower half of it below the ball. With the win, Will Zalatoris pockets two point seven million dollars. Plus, he's number one in the FedEx Cup standings, heading into the BMW Championships. 
Then you have the Tour Championship. If Will Zalatoris can finish first in the FedEx Cup standings after the Tour Championship, he will pocket $18 million. Coming up on this episode of From the Short Grass, I sit down with nine-year-old drive, chip, and putt national runner-up Berkeley Turner. Yes, she got to go to Augusta National, won the putting contest there of the drive, chip, and putt, and finished runner-up in her age division, which was the nine-year-old age division, and she has some high expectations for her golfing career. Beachwood Pinnacle Hotels, one of our great sponsors of From the Short Grass. BPHotels.com is where you find them on the web. Matthew Allen, Blair Allen, they do a great job at BPHotels.com managing hotel properties. Go find them on the web, BPHotels.com. We're back after this. This is Thomas Blackman of Blackman Auctions. You all know by now I'm not a good golfer, but my son loves the game and he and I have been playing more. I've got my score down to, uh, I've quit playing a scramble on every hole. I'm using the bunker rake much less than I used to, and a lot of the time I hit my drives past the women's tee box. All of my success in golf can directly be tied to me listening to From the Short Grass. Without it, I would not be the golfer I am today. Trey, you owe me 20 bucks for that. Trey knows golf, I know auctions. Come see us at BlackmanAuctions.com. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. At Stevens, our philosophy is to invest every dollar as if it were our own. To seize opportunity. To anticipate rather than react. To deliver constant focus in an ever-changing world. And to pursue the objectives of our clients in order to help them reach their financial goals. A proven history of helping companies and individuals. Stevens, member NYSE SIPC. With all the decisions you need to make about what to do in El Dorado, finding a place to stay is an easy one. The Haywood is uniquely positioned to make your stay one to treasure. Located in the historic Union Square district of El Dorado, the Haywood offers luxurious accommodations that feature contemporary, colorful rooms with high-quality bedding. Comfortable baths with walk-in showers and a spacious workspace with stylish plantation shutters that are unique additions to the stunning decor in a non-smoking environment. Make the Haywood your home away from home the next time Time you visit El Dorado. Welcome back to this edition of From the Short Grass. I am your host, Trey Schapp. Berkeley Turner started playing golf on a video game before telling her parents she wanted to go try the real thing. Now, her mom and dad did not play golf, but Berkeley picked up the game and has excelled at it. She's the nine year old drive, chip, and putt national runner up, and she is hoping to win next year in 2023 hoping to make her way back to augusta for the national drive chip and putt championships on the tee berkeley turner berkeley turner thanks for joining me on from the short grass i understand that you love the game of golf is that right yes sir how long have you been playing golf for four years four years what made you want to start playing golf there was this video game on my on my tablet and my Mom kept wanting to delete it because she put it back on Disney, but then I would cry when she would take it off. So I would just, and then we would pass by the golf course and we would just say, me play, me play, when we would go. And I begged, to, when we would go to the dance, I do dance, when I would talk to my dance coach, she would just, I would tell her that I wanted to go play golf. And she was like, and she told my parents that I needed to go play golf. So that was it. You love it. A little video game got you hooked on the game of golf. That's pretty interesting. Were you good at that game? I think so. <laughs> yeah. You're good at golf, though, aren't you? Yes, sir. Dawn Darter, Miss Dawn, mm-hmm. is your teacher. What does she mean to you? She means like a second mom. I can see that in her. I've known some young girls, young ladies that she's helped along the way, and she does seem like a second mom at times. What does she do to help you with your game? She just helps me with my swing and stuff, and she's she's just supportive. I was talking to her earlier, and she said that your, your swing is good. You're starting to grow into it a little bit. You're getting a little more length with your shots. Do you feel that yourself? Does it come natural? Pretty much. (laughs) So the drive, chip, and putt, you entered it. And take me through the stages of the drive, chip, and putt. Where did you start out? 
Burns Park, and then we went to this course in Tulsa, and then uh, we went to uh, to Lotion, mm -hmm. and then it goes to Augusta. So Burns Park, how did you do there? What was it like? I didn't do that good. I was a little bit nervous at first, and Tulsa, I, I did pretty good. Yeah, and then you got to go to the Lotion Club, which is one of the most exclusive clubs in the state of Arkansas. What was that experience like? Well, it was actually raining. We were under these tents, and you had to use putters to actually get the water off. Otherwise, it was going to collapse. Oh, wow. So <laughs> it was kind of crazy, huh? Yeah. But you did good there, enough mm -hmm. to where you were able to make it to the National Drive Chip and Putt at Augusta National. The Sunday before they played the Masters Tournament this past year, what was that like? Did you get to drive up Magnolia Lane? Yes, sir. It was very beautiful, and it was just like everything was like <laughs> just so pretty. Was there anything out of place? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. I've only been there one time for a practice round, and I, I hope someday I get to go back. So take me through when you got to Augusta, what all did you get? What all did they do for you? And obviously, like we said, you got to drive up Magnolia Lane, and not many people get to do that. Yeah, they get they let you practice before. So you get to fill the greens a little bit, but not on the actual green that you're going to play on. But they're really fast. Yeah. And then you got to hit on their practice range a little bit to warm mm -hmm. up to. And then when it came time for the main event, you got up there. What was the first one you did? Was it driving or chipping or putting? What was first? Drive. Drive was first. And how did you do? I got a little bit nervous, and it was like 45 degrees, and I took off my jacket that they gave us. So I was a little bit cold, so I didn't hit it as far. I hit it like 130, and I was usually hitting it like 170 on the range. So I think I just got a little bit nervous. Yeah, and then you went to the chip part. Is that mm -hmm. right? How did you do there? I got second. Second in chip. That's pretty good. And then did you win the putting competition? Yes, sir. Did you make it? I did not make it. I got it very close, though. Well, close enough to win. Mm -hmm. And then once you won, what was that like? <laughs> It was very exciting, and I was just – I didn't know what to think. Yeah, did you – Did were there any former champions there in yeah. a green jacket that you got to meet? Bubba Watson was there. What was that like? It was crazy. Yeah. Anybody else there besides Bubba? Alexa Pano and some other girls that played in the amateur. Right, the Augusta Women's Amateur. Mm -hmm. That's pretty neat. Or is there anybody that you look up to that's a junior girls golfer that – you like to kind of watch and see how they're doing and maybe become one of them one day? Well, I like to look up to AK and then Mackenzie Lee. Mm -hmm. She practices sometimes at my home course. And Isabel Chadez. Yeah, those are pretty good ones. You like watching golf on TV? Yes, sir. I like to watch, watch the majors and the stuff. The majors. What did you think about the British Open that Cam Smith won a couple of weeks back? That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. I mean, he, he ever made five birdies in a row <laughs> like he did? That no. was pretty crazy, wasn't it? Yeah. How long do you want to keep playing golf? Pretty much for my whole life. Yeah? Thinking about maybe in college finding a good school to go to mm -hmm. if your game can progress? Yeah. I really, I really want to play golf in college, and hopefully I might go pro. Yeah. That's some big aspirations, but I like it. I mean, it's a game that you can play for your entire life. It's not like basketball or softball where, I mean, yes, golf, you could get injured, but golf isn't as hard on your body as other sports. And it's something that you pick up at a young age and you stick with it. I think you got a good shot. Now, your parents don't force you to go to the golf course, do they? No, I do it on my own. Do you have to? beg them to take you to the golf course sometimes are you like i want to go to the golf course yes yeah, sometimes <laughs> what what's their reaction like they're like okay let's go <laughs> okay let's go hey you gotta like that what about school um i i i'm doing i skipped a, i skipped kindergarten so i like i'm doing this year i was doing fifth and sixth grade work mm -hmm. when i was doing four two and i started doing statistics wow you like that? Mm -hmm. So you're pretty smart, too. It's pretty good. Statistics, you can add up your score real quick, I bet, can't you? Yeah. 
I understand you've played some some tournaments here recently. Have you done pretty well in those? Yeah, I won my first ASGA, and uh, Don has this junior tour. That a junior tour is Don. Don runs it, and I did a couple of those, mm-hmm. and I made it to Tulsa through it. Yeah, she was telling me about that yesterday. The fact that you get to go to Tulsa, that it's all paid for and everything, and you get to go over there and play. That's pretty impressive. What do you like about the game of golf? Well, I used to love my driving part, but then I started practicing on my putting, and now putting is my favorite part. Is it? Mm Mm-hmm. So you don't like to just drive the ball as far as you can. You want to work on the putting. Well, I I love driving, but I just love putting even more now. Yeah. You a good putter? Mm Mm-hmm. You can like, I mean, you practice at the greens at North Hills. There are some fast greens on this golf course out here. Can you putt on these golf course greens out here at North Hills? Yeah. You're really good? Mm-hmm. You're not going to putt it off the green? <laughs> That's good. That's a good start. Do you look up to any professional golfers? Yes, I look up to Maria Falsi because she was a former Razorback and she's just always been really nice to me yeah what what was you got to meet her Mm -hmm. what was that like it was very exciting and i got to meet her her whole family really where'd you get to meet her the northwest arkansas walmart tournament yeah yeah we went and but her whole family was just nice to me what was it like going to an lpga event it was really exciting getting like stuff signed and being there to watch them actually do stuff I love to do. I want to go back to the Drive, Chip, and Putt National Championship. Where's the trophy? Um, It's actually in the pro shop. Is it? Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to go look at that. So you didn't you, you wanted to put it in the pro shop? You didn't want to take it home? I wanted everybody to see it. That's pretty cool. What What do you like most about getting to play the game of golf? Is it being with friends or is it just the competition? that you get to partake in? I think it's a little bit of both because I love being with my friends and playing it, but I also like being competitive. I'm very competitive, so it's that part too. So, Maria Fossey, any others that you like to um, watch? I like Gabby Lopez and Stacy Lewis. Stacy Lewis. She's a former Razorback, won a national championship at Arkansas, so did Maria Fossey. Maybe one day we're talking about Berkeley Turner being a national champion at the University of Arkansas. Maybe. I see you're smiling real big. I mean, you want to be a Razorback someday? I hope I hope I can. It's a nice course they play on the Blessings. Have you seen it? No, I have not seen it in person. I've seen it on the TV on like the national events they have there, but it's just I've, it's pretty beautiful from what I've seen. Yeah, and they'll be hosting uh, the Blessings Collegiate again this uh, October, I believe, and it'll be on TV again, so you'll get to watch it, and maybe you could talk your parents into getting you out of school and going up there and watching it in person. Maybe. Maybe. That'd be pretty nice. All right, what's the best golf course you've ever played? Well, probably <laughs> – well, seeing Augusta was very pretty, but – The best golf course I ever played was probably the... Can you remember? (laughs) I played a lot of courses. (laughs) Yeah. There are a lot of good ones out there. Yeah. Was it in Arkansas or was it in... It was in Arkansas probably. Yeah. I've played some courses in Oklahoma and they're they're all pretty much the same to me. They're just pretty. I like to ask my guests on the podcast to pick three other golfers that they would like to play a fantasy foursome with. They can be living. They can be deceased. They can be basically anyone. Give me three golfers that Berkeley would like to play a round of golf with. Maria Fossey, Gabby Lopez, and Stacey Lewis. There you go. I kind of had a feeling that was coming. I was surprised that you didn't pick like a Tiger Woods or a a Roy McIlroy or something like that. But those three, Gabby Lopez, Maria Fossey, and Stacey Lewis, all former Razorbacks as well. It's mm-hmm. a pretty good group right there. Where, what course are you going to go play? You could play any course in the world. What course are you going to take them and play? I would actually just want to be able to play Augusta. Yeah. They have the Augusta National Women's Amateur. So maybe in 
time, which you're nine years old right now, about to be 10, I understand. So let's say nine years from now, you'd be 19. It'd be about the time that you could be good enough to maybe play it. What would that mean to you? It would mean pretty special. But I would, you know how Anna Davis won at 16? Mm -hmm. I was thinking maybe I could try to go at 14. Whoa, you're going to try and knock it up a notch. Go at 14? You're going to have a lot of people in this state of Arkansas and around the, the globe rooting for you if you can do that. Can I come caddy for you? Maybe. Maybe? I'd like to do that. That'd be fun. What's in your bag right now? What type of clubs do you play? I play TaylorMade in, in five irons, and I have a Sim 2 driver, mm -hmm. and then I have a Cobra putter. Yeah, and what and type of ping, golf? Ping wetter, wedges. Ping wedges, okay. What type of golf ball do you like to play? I like tricks on soft fills. Yeah. Can you spin it? Sometimes. Sometimes. That's good. That's good. Well, keep it up. Best of luck to you, and uh, thanks for your time, and it was good talking with you. Thank you. This is Thomas Blackman with Blackman Auctions. The other day I was visiting with Trey and he talked about goose poop and iguana poop and a golf ball and if you hit the poop or the iguana or the goose, can you move the ball or the poop or something like that. Listening to him talk about poop and golf balls with such passion made me realize how much he knows about golf and how little I did. Once again, Trey really knows golf. I really know auctions. For the last 84 years, better auctions have been Blackman Auctions. With all the decisions you need to make about what to do in El Dorado, finding a place to stay is an easy one. The Haywood is uniquely positioned to make your stay one to treasure. Located in the historic Union Square district of El Dorado, the Haywood offers luxurious accommodations that feature contemporary, colorful rooms with high-quality bedding. Comfortable baths with walk-in showers and a spacious workspace with stylish plantation shutters that are unique additions to the stunning decor in a non-smoking environment. Make the Haywood your home away from home the next time Time you visit El Dorado. Welcome back to this edition of From the Short Grass. I want to tell you real quick about one of our great sponsors, Blackman Auctions. Find them on the web at blackmanauctions.com. You can look at their full lineup of upcoming auctions right on their website, blackmanauctions.com. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. On the tee with our rules segment, here's PGA Master Professional. Adam Carney. Adam, this comes in from Jason. He said, in the U.S. Open, I remember seeing a player play a shot from one of the tents set up along the fairway. What are his options when faced with that scenario? I don't remember which player it was, but I remember the shot. I believe it was a three-wood on a par five. He was up there in the area where they had some of the – I don't think it was a merchandise tent. might have been a food and beverage tent. Right. But he basically played it from the carpet – and sure. I believe if he would have taken relief, he would have been in some thick, thick rough. Yeah. So, I mean, we've seen Phil do it a few times. Yeah. Uh, so, Tony Romo did it once. Yeah. I saw Brett Bear on Fox News. He he did it once. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what we're talking about are, are you know, obviously is, is going to happen most frequently at, at, a, at a tour event or you know, it could be a large amateur event or a state event. Um, we're talking about temporary immovable obstructions. Um, so we have, within the rules of golf, two types of obstructions, movable and immovable. So an example of a movable obstruction would be the soda can or a piece of paper or something like that. Um, and then we have an immovable obstruction, which could be a cart path. It could be a bathroom on the golf course. Uh, it could be an irrigation control box. So at tour events, obviously, um, they like to make money at those events, so they set up merchandise tents mm -hmm. and they set up corporate tents and things like that. So those are not they're, – they're temporary immovable obstructions, meaning they're not there all the time. The short form is TIO. TIO, yeah. Um, so under those circumstances, the player is entitled to relief um, from a TIO – if it interferes with just just the same ruling as a as an immovable obstruction, if it were an irrigation control box or a cart path interference with stance, swing, lie of the golf ball, or intended line of play. Well, that's where a TIO comes into effect. That's not the same for an 
a immovable obstruction. So if you hit a shot on the golf course just out playing, there's an irrigation control box six feet in front of you, right between you and the hole, but it's not interfering with your lie, your stance, or area of your intended swing. What do we like to say? Tough luck Tough starts, luck some, yeah, starts yep. somewhere, right? Tough yeah. luck starts somewhere. So a TIO is different in that it's been set up for the tournament. So if if there is no interference and the player thinks, hey, I can, I can play the ball from here, then he's entitled to play it. Just like if your ball comes to rest on a cart path, you're entitled to relief. But if you want to play it, you, you may can. have to drop it into a bush taking relief. So I'm going to play it off the cart path. I've sure. actually did that a few Speaking weeks ago. Speaking of Will Zalatoris, the PGA Championship, sixth sure. hole, Southern Hills this year, yep. he played a shot off the cart path. Yeah, best lie you could get. But that's where he was also – taking an unplayable mm -hmm. and he had to take it on the cart path correct. and then played from the cart path. correct correct and that i think it was on the seventh hole the par three if i'm not mistaken that's number six six sorry um i just i remember it from 07 i was there that year when Corey pavin had a nightmare on that hole so. oh boy uh but anyway uh th yeah y you know so in that case yeah he's his best situation was hey i mean that's a firm tight lie players love that stuff because they can spin it they can do whatever and i think he got up and down he, too. he, he played pretty well i think he only yeah made uh bogey i believe yeah on yeah because he had to, he, i think it was in a penalty area but anyway we're getting off topic so uh the qu the question comes on a tio now we go from we add that element of interference from my line of play um so under those circumstances, it, the interference must be on the direct line between the ball and the hole um, or the in, uh, intended flight, you know, of the golf ball to, mm -hmm. to the hole. So um, so if I'm going to hook it, you know, and that, that is in the way, then, yes, you're going to get relief. Uh, but it, it's, it's kind of a there, – there are several different types of TIOs. Um, you may have some TIOs where you can take relief – on either side, it's the player's choice. You may have a TIO where the committee has determined relief must be this direction or relief must be that direction. Um, it's totally up to the committee to make those decisions. And, th and it's, it's really meant to maintain the integrity of the golf course and you've hit a bad shot and you're not, sure. not going to get out of jail for hitting a bad shot. Although sometimes in golf we do, right? But yeah. Um, so, I mean, if he chooses to play it, he can play it. If, but if he has direct intervention, um, then it, it's the player's going to be entitled to relief. It's, uh, you know, one of those things that, you know, you always call an official in for, no question about it. Um, but, uh, yeah, he's okay to play it. And, and several, pl several players have. Um, and, actually, I, like I said, I, I like the comparison to the cart path because – you know, good players, most most amateur players that are higher handicap like the fairways at about an inch and a half so their ball sits up so they can get their club underneath it and get it up in the air. Good players like firm, tight lies so they can really compress the golf ball and spin it and control it more. Um, and, and so playing it off a cart path is a perfect situation for them a lot of times. Jason, thanks for the question. If you have one, send us an email from the short grass at gmail. My thanks to Adam Carney, as always, for his expertise when it comes to rules questions associated with the game of golf. The PGA Tour has announced its 2022-2023 FedEx Cup season schedule of 47 tournaments that features 44 regular season events and three FedEx Cup playoff events, culminating with the crowning of the 2023 FedEx Cup champion at the Tour Championship at East Lake in Atlanta, August 21st through 27th of 2023. Also announced a change to the point scales to reach the FedEx Cup championships. Just 70 players earn a start in the first playoffs event, the FedEx St. Jude Championship, followed by 50 players advancing to the BMW Championship, and the Tour Championship field will stay at 30. That is for next year. Have I confused you enough about that? As always, you can go to PGATour.com 
to find out more information about their upcoming schedules. And then it's going to go to a calendar format, a full calendar format with the 2024 season. That will do it for this edition of From the Short Grass. Thanks as always for listening. Remember, when you find your ball mark on the green, fix it and a couple of more. And I hope to see you sometime soon from the short grass. You've been listening to From the Short Grass, a weekly podcast dedicated to the game of golf. This has been a presentation of the Buzz Radio Network.